following sports program is a presentation of Cox Cable 8. The Santa Fe Raiders coach John Carter and company would love to avenge last year's state semifinal loss. State champion Jacksonville Bulls looks to pick up where they left off last year, already 2-0 this season. Both squads are sure to contend for the top spot in the 4 3 a district. It's Santa Fe and Jacksonville Bulls coming up on Cox Cable 8. Good evening and welcome to a soggy and drenched Raider field as we get set for a rematch of last year's state semifinal between the Santa Fe Raiders and Jacksonville Bowls. Hello everybody, I'm Mike Morgan along with Marcus Overstreet. Well, the Santa Fe Raiders looked very impressive last week in a game against the Buholtz Bobcats. They run a run and shoot offense, but lately, Mark, it's been more run than shoot. Yeah, that's right, Mike. The Santa Fe offense completed only two passes last week, but that's all they needed to defeat Buholtz. The Santa Fe offense, their strength is the running game, and that's led by running back Taiwan Ford. Also look for quarterback Freddie Lucas. He's a scrambler, and he can get out of the pocket and make things happen. And also don't forget about Tony O'Mason and also Adrian Peterson. They're a compliment to Ford and that running attack. As for Jacksonville Bowls, it's a bit of a rebuilding year. Coach Corky Rogers admits this is not the same squad that won the state crown a year ago, but the Bowls does own the state's longest winning streak, 18 consecutive games. And Mark Santa Fe has a big district game against Eastside next week, but apparently motivation will not be a factor. Well, we talked to Coach John Carter, and he says that he admits that the coaching staff is looking a little bit ahead to next week's matchup with Eastside, but he says his players are going to be ready and they're going to want some revenge. The Santa Fe team feels that they could have been state champs last year if not for a loss to, a loss to this Bulls team in the state playoff semifinals, Mike. Well, strike or no strike, if it was a baseball game, they'd call it, but this is football and we're going to tough it out. And speaking of tough, there's no one tougher than our roving sideline reporters, Jason Alpert and Ivan Gatewood. Guys, take it away. Thanks, guys. Last Friday, we saw the Santa Fe Raiders escape Raider Field with a victory by beating the Buholt Bobcats 21-6. Now the reason why they won that game is because of defense and to beat Jacksonville Bowl tonight they're going to have to rely on that defense as well. Uh, we see the three keys to this game. First of all, and Xavier Robinson has to anchor the defense. He's a leader in this team. He's going to have to step it up. Second of all, they cannot bite on the play action pass of Jacksonville Bowls. Last week Josh Haywood did not bite on Doug Johnson's passes and ended up with an interception late in the game. And last, as Marcus and Mike had already touched upon, they cannot be looking ahead to next Saturday's matchup against the Eastside Rams. Now, Jason, what does Jacksonville Bulls have to do to lead the Raider field with a 3-0 record? Well, the Bo Jacksonville Bulls Bulldogs, obviously in this weather, have to establish their ground game. They lost Robert Pollard, their top rusher from last year, but they've got two sophomores, Antonio Roundtree and William McCray, who should be able to step in and fill his shoes. Secondly, they have to keep high intensity throughout the game. Santa Fe was pumped up all week getting ready for this big rematch, and the ha Bulls has to keep it up to, in order to win this game. And finally, they have to stop the man for Santa Fe, Taiwan Ford. Ford gained over 140 yards last week. If he tries to go inside, there's a 270-pound, two, six foot six, big, big, big guy, a sophomore, Sharon Dorsey, who should be able to stop him. Division one scouts are already drooling over him. If Ford tries to go outside, there's Travis Von Tobin, who should stop him on the outside. He's the inspirational leader, a senior on this team. If they do that, they should be able to leave Raider Field with their 19th consecutive victory. Thanks, Jason. Now let's hope the inclement weather does not ruin an otherwise exciting matchup. Well, let's send it back to Mike. Okay, well, we'll get set to kick it off, and we come back right here on the Cox Cable 8 Game of the Week. Cox Cable 8's Game of the Week is brought to you by A. Accident Attorney Stephen A. Bagan and Associates, Acura of Gainesville, Advanced Car Stereo Plus, Family Pool and Spa Centers, and Jones Automotive. The following sports program is a presentation of Cox Cable 8. Last Friday on the Game of the Week. Franny! No good! Gets it back!
Melvin Freeney's three at the buzzer set up a wild overtime that saw Gainesville nip Buholtz by three. Tonight, another backyard war. The Eastside Rams struggled before the holidays, but now they're having the last laugh thanks to Curtis Rowe and junior sensation Rashad Davis. The Hawthorne Hornets will have to deal with a packed standing room only crowd in Gainesville tonight and the possibility of playing without their top two scorers. It'll be the Rams and the Hornets coming up next on the Game of the Week. Table 8 Sports presents High School Basketball. Welcome to Eastside Gym on the sprawling campus of Gainesville's Eastside High School, where you can always depend on one thing, a full house. Tonight, it's the Rams of Eastside entertaining the Hawthorne Hornets. Hello, buddy. I'm Michael McKnight along with Kevin McKelvin. Kevin, uh, we saw Eastside before the break in some Christmas tournaments. Uh, the one up at Santa Fe comes to mind. They had a hard time putting the ball in the basket, but they've had a resurgence of late, and it's due to a lot to Rashad Davis. It sure is, Mike. We talked about in the last game that those Christmas tournaments seem to help teams a lot, and Eastside's certainly one of those teams. Only shooting 39% on the year. They were struggling before the break. They're really picking it up uh, uh, as late, and like you said, Rashad Davis, his rebounding, really a big factor for these Rams. Hawthorne comes into the contest, ranked number ninth in, in Class 1A, seven and six, but tonight they're playing without their top two scorers, Zach Brown and uh, Sean Daniels. Yeah, it's going to be a big loss, Sean Daniels and Zach Brown to this team, but I tell you what, Mike, five guys on this team average in double figures. Torres Williams is going to have to step it up a little bit. Unfortunately, these guys won't be here, but I think this Hawthorne team, a lot of athletic ability, it's still going to be a very good game. Eastside has already beaten the Hornets twice, once by 14 and once by 10. You know how hard it is to beat a team three times. We'll find out in just a moment. The starting lineups and the tip-off when we come back. You're watching High School Basketball on Cox Cabulate Sports. 